Hey guys, welcome to Red Jewel Art. I'm Julie and I am going to do a cloud over pearl effect. Um, I am not using Australian Floetrol. I'm not using satin enamels. What I'm going to do is add three drops, sorry my voice is going, of this Min Wax Pre-Stain Wood Conditioner. And then I'm going to add it to the Amsterdam Black and I'm also going to use the Liquid Tex Paints Gray. What I want that paint to do is kind of glide over the top and let that base paint come up through and cause those cloud effects or the little pearls. Um, so I'm going to show you how all that works. But first I'm going to mix up a couple of my paints and show you how to do it. So I've got the Liquid Tex paint gray already in here. Um, I don't usually use Liquitex all by itself. I usually put a little bit of the Amsterdam in it. Plus I want this paint gray to be darker. I want it to almost be black. So then what I'm going to do is add the Floetrol. Sorry, I'm doing a voiceover. I was so nervous while I was recording. This is my very first video, by the way. Um, I hope you guys all enjoy it. Please subscribe and like. Um, I really want to do a lot of these videos because I've had so many people on the other platforms that I am on tell me, please do videos. I want to see how you do this. So here I'm going to add the three drops of the conditioner. And then I need to mix that up really good. You want to mix it, scrape the sides, make sure it's all mixed really, really well. And it is going to be thicker. Like if you've ever seen Sarah Taylor, which is a huge inspiration of mine, she mixes her paints very thin. And I do do some like that, and I will do some more videos, and I'll do some like that. This is the golden. I also use golden, um, and that's the golden fluid, uh, fluid acrylics. So anyway, she does hers really thin. This is going to be a lot thicker. And I know some people think, well, that wouldn't work. It does. It works really well. Um, I saw Erica Hughes do this, and I was very inspired to try it and add my little twist to it. So I'm going to try to show you how thick it is. It's really hard with a dark color like that. So I'm adding a couple more drops just because it is so thick, and I want it just a tiny bit thinner, and I really don't want to add water to it. Um, Australian Floetrol is a lot thinner than this, so let's see if I can show you guys. It's really hard at that angle I have, but what it does is it just leave, leaves a slight trace and disappears. So now I'm going to mix up the Golden Fluid Acrylics. I always add my Floetrol first when I'm doing that because you only need a few drops of the fluid acrylic. Okay, so, gotta remove the little goobers first. <laughs> I think I added three or four drops in there. Now I'm gonna add the three drops of the wood conditioner. mix that up really good you know and if you guys don't want to watch me mix go ahead and skip ahead go to I'll try to get um, time stamps on this seeing how well this is my very first video I'm not exactly sure how to edit everything but I'm sure I can figure it out um, I'm going to have all the colors that I'm using uh, in the listing down below in the drop down below. 
Um, the next one I'm going to mix is the, I know that's the nickel azel. The, the one before was teal. This looks brown, but it's not. It's, well, I guess it depends on how much you use, but um, I use about three drops in this also of the Golden, and it gives it more of a yellow. It's just like a golden color. And I'll mix that really good. Now I'm using the um, Gildens, Gildens, um, oh my gosh, I just went blank, Essentials Semi-Gloss. That is my base paint. And I will show you, so I had some of it left over and I put it into some bottles, but I'm going to pour it into that cup and I will show you and mix it up and show you. So yeah, once again, that just has slight trace. Uh, I think that one was a little too thick. So it just has a slight trace and disappears. But I will show you what the base looks like. Hopefully you can see a little better on that one. Okay, now I'm done mixing and I will move on to the base, which is the semi-gloss. And I do think it's important to use semi-gloss. At least that's what I found works for me. I got a couple bottles of those. They're just left over from a previous painting I'd done. Um, that painting I filmed also, but apparently it cut off and I had no idea. So I lost that video. All right, now I'm just gonna add a few drops of the water to that, mix it up. I want it the same thickness as my paints. So it's just gonna leave a slight trace and disappear. As you can see, it's, it's running off the stick really well. That looks about right. Make sure your sides are all scraped. Everything's mixed really well. I hope you guys can see that good. I'm going to add a few more drops. If your base is way too thick, it's so hard to tip and get your paint where how where you want it to go so now i'm just going to spread this on the canvas oh and this is a 12 by 12 gallery wrapped canvas um and i am not worried about it dripping off the sides all i want to do is cut cover the top of it because when I tilt, all that's going to run off the edges anyway. And I want to keep a, enough paint on the top so that I have enough paint to do all my tipping. Because you pretty much tip a lot of paint off of the canvas. Um, this is a technique that you really want to stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. So... Um, you'll see here when I stretch it. All right, now we're going to put the paint on the canvas. Um, here's all my other paints. I have them previously mixed just to save time. I will have all these in the drop below. I do have... Um, a couple different versions of Payton's gray so I added a white to get that gray there's your just normal Payton's gray right there and that is also teal but it's 
darker. I think I added more drops to it. I don't actually end up using it. Um, it was a little too thick. So here's the the my black. Just Amsterdam black. And then this is the mixture of the Payne's Gray and black. And then this one is... Oh my gosh, I want to say it's phthalo green. Wait, no, I'm wrong. I'll Like I said, I'll have it all in the drop box down below. So this is just some other, that's just Payne's Gray right there. And here's the teal golden. I was going to just do like music and let you guys watch, but I really felt like it's so much helpful if I can talk you through everything I'm doing. And here I'm just trying to really lay out so that I have colors in different spots. I don't want just a streak, a streak, and a streak. I kind of just want pops here and there. I think that one is golden magenta. But I added it. Um, I think I didn't do very many drops because I wanted it light. So that's one thing I like about golden is you can really control the amount of pigment you have in there. Um, golden's fluid acrylics are very pigmented so it doesn't take a lot but if you just want a little bit now that one right there is an Amsterdam and we're off the top of my head I can't think of what it's called but I like I said I'll have the all those colors for you guys actually you know what I think I'll do I think I might do a snapshot at the end for you guys you can just take a little screenshot and we'll have all the listings of the colors I got that idea from Karen <laughs> that waterfall acrylic I just love her if you haven't seen her she's amazing um, so this is so much like the bloom techniques that you see Karen do um, these are done like cell activator. I'm not using the other colors, the other way of mixing that you do in the bloom. I'm only using the cell activators. All right, let's get tilting here. So I start going and I notice it wants to roll a little bit faster the the paints wanting to roll over a little bit so I slowed it down just to get that get into the edge of course I'm impatient so I try to help it along <laughs> now I'm just adding a little bit of the base just to help things along And always watch where your weight of your paint is, because that helps you a lot. And really, all I do is I just keep tilting until I get something that really inspires me. <laughs> I guess is a way to put it. I'm just, I just keep tilting until I feel like I have enough paint off of the canvas. And also that it's the composition that I'm looking for. And you'll see when I bring the canvas back down, you'll see on the end that 
that I've tilted a lot of paint away from it, you'll see cells start popping up. And that's because I've thinned that paint out just enough. Because if I just left it right now, I'd probably get some clouds, but not as many. And it's because your paint's too thick. And I guess, I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm assuming it's because that base can't poke up through when it's that thick. Any cloud effect pretty much works the best when you when you uh, stretch it out really good. Excuse me, I didn't take a drink. <laughs> All right, as you can see, uh, you know, all my paint is dripping off the sides now. Um, on that left-hand side, you'll see it, it's starting to separate and cause cells. On the right side up at the top, it's starting to separate and cause cells. Um, I hope you guys all find this informational. Because I've had so many people ask me, please do videos. I haven't done them because I've been so nervous. Um, which is funny because I'm a very talkative person. I'm usually very outgoing. <laughs> but you put me on a camera and I just shut up. <laughs> so this took a lot for me to do. But I really wanted to share what I've learned through all these years of using acrylics and doing the fluid type of art. Uh, I really just, I enjoy it. I find this very relaxing, therapeutic. I have a, a bad back. I did nails for 30 years and my back just was shot. It's kind of a hereditary thing, but so after 30 years of doing nails, I just couldn't do it anymore. But I've always been an artist and I was I still needed that outlet of art. So I found that, especially because I also have fibromyalgia, it's best to move, but I can't sit still. I can't stand very long as I'm standing right now, but I get to move around a lot. I get to move when I want to move and so this has been my outlet to being in pain for a lot of years. And I enjoy it so much. Okay, so now I'm bringing the weight of the paint back to the center. And then bringing it back down so that that middle area can come down. That's how you control where you want it to come down is by where the weight of that paint is. And I'm just about done here stretching it. I kind of just really liked the look of that cut off where I cut off that where it was joined together, those two spots down on the right hand bottom. All right, now I'm just kind of making sure all my sides look good. It's a gallery wrap, so you really want to pay attention to the sides. All right, and I'll just bring the weight back to the center. And then we'll get plan. This is the best part. You definitely want to have a palette knife. Um, you'll want a torch or a heat gun. I prefer a torch. Some people do use heat guns. Um, the problem with the heat gun, I feel like it dries out your paint. Where the torch is very quick and popping the bubbles. Now 
that looks good right there okay sorry about that glare I didn't realize until I was editing this video that there was a glare all right so now I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to just add these little it almost looks like cracks in a rock or the veining that you get in marbling see how you just bring out that paint and it will just come out I'm not putting a ton of pressure I'm just gently dragging that paint out and I always wipe always wipe your palette knife after because it now it has white on it and you'll add white there and that's what I did right there is I forgot to wipe it these little touches that you add like this add so much so much to this art sorry if you guys can hear my dogs barking in the back I have a little Yorkie and he just loves to go outside and bark at the other dogs he's act actually a Chorky <laughs> a Yorkie Chihuahua mix he's only six months old all right so after I'm done right here, I'm going to grab my other palette knife. I couldn't find my metal one, so I grabbed the plastic one, but it works just as good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint and I'm going to glide it across on the knife. And so I'm just going to add it on the back of the knife. If anybody's ever swiped with cell activator, you know exactly what I'm doing here. So I just want to take it and lightly swipe it across. And that will give you that lacing, that beautiful lacing. And you may not get the lacing right away, but it will happen. So be patient with it because sometimes that lacing appears right away and sometimes it takes a minute. As you can tell right there, there is barely any lacings that's showing up. But it will, I promise. And you'll see it as it happens. Um, as I'm doing this, I do end up speeding up this because it takes probably an hour for me to actually do all of the little touches up that I do. And a lot of people say, no, it looks beautiful. Leave it like that. And I, I can't. <laughs> I like to play. Um, another thing you can do and you're going to see is I'm going to, oh, here, I'm going to torch it real quick. Torching will help the cells come up. And I don't know if you guys can see that little teeny white dot that's starting to pop. Those clouds are going to start popping up inside this. But you can take other colors, not just the black or the Payne's gray, and you can swipe over your colors, which I'm going to do right here. I'm going to take my white cell activator and I'm going to just swipe that across. And, you know, I, I get lost in it when I'm doing it. And when you do this, it'll all just come to you on what you should do. Just look for the flow. Look for what you want it to do. Um, other things you can do is you can actually take your white and slice it into your color so it's actually like doing the cracks that I did but you end up causing a crack into your color and you'll actually see me do that here in just a second I like to give it dimension and I feel like if I just leave it the way it is, I don't have as much dimension as I want. I really want it to look like 
it naturally happened the way it did. Right here I'm going to swipe another It's just the um, black I'm swiping across. Now I'm just sitting and looking, trying to get the painting to talk to me. <laughs> okay, right. Right there, I'm going to just add. So there's a little bit of like there's that magenta in there that I just didn't like the way it was popping through. It's kind of still there because that cell activator will kind of let it pop through. But I didn't like the way it looked. And I know I'm probably going to get a bunch of people going, whoa, why did you cover that up? All right, and then I don't know if you see that yellow right there, that nickel azel gold. I end up covering that up too. I don't know why I felt like there was just that one little streak of it all by itself just was bothering me. Right here is where I was talking about how you can like kind of cut into it. And cause like the little cracks inside your color. And now I'm just still dragging, touching up every little piece that I can. Um, when you do pull those little ends out sometimes it looks really it looks better if you add like a little piece coming off the bottom so it's just not one single line coming out it's just what I like to do all right now I'm just gonna speed this all up for you guys you pretty much get the gist of what I'm I'm doing here um, if you want to watch this slow you can always slow it down uh, there's like, I think there's like the what, the little dots that you can click on and change your speed. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoy this. I hope you find this educational. I hope you want to see more. And if you do, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. I am looking forward to doing more videos. This has been so much fun. A little nerve-wracking, but I've really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'll be back with the close-up and final words.
All right, here's the final results after I got done. I let it sit for a little bit so you can see all the cells popping up. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Um, I'm actually going to show you the dried results here in just a second. Right there, that is the dried results. Thank you. Bye.